Good evening. Good evening. So this is the continuation of previous series of talks about mathematical ideas, but really now we are raising this to higher mathematical level. So my topic is from Fox Colorings. We ended on Fox Colorings before, and we have still some trefoil drawn with three colors. And we go to quantums and and today with young Baxter operators. The goal for the next talks, for the next part of this talks, talk al homology of young Baxter operators, and if possible, connection to Hovanov homology and maybe phase transition in statistical physics. So it's evening here, maybe in Warsaw or Gdańsk is already morning. So welcome everybody who is listening, whether you are in Bethesda, Columbus, Uelva, Warsaw or Gdańsk. So let me start from Fox Tricoloring, but very quickly. So in Fox three colorings, we have the set of three colors. Let's call this mathematical Z3. And we are coloring arcs of the diagram from tunnel to tunnel with the three colors. Orientation was not needed. And either at every crossing there was the same color or there were three, three different colors, like in this example of fox coloring in the corner. But to write this algebraically, maybe I will write it more kind of naively than before. Algebraically, if I have here color A, here color B, and here color C, like here. First of all, one condition was that we don't change color when we go over the same color. So here we have B. And then the condition for these colors is that really A plus B plus C are congruent to zero mod, mod B. So it's easy to check. And this is very nice symmetric condition, totally symmetric condition. It's very easy to check that if all colors are different, then this holds, something of type 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 2, this is 3. Or if all colors are the same, let's say like 1, not any number will do. Of course, it's not always 3, it may be only congruent to 3 mod 3, it holds. On the other hand, if you use only two letters, it never holds. So this is the property of our Fox color. Fox 3 color. Now what about N? With n, if you try this equation, it would be natural to try to generalize this modulo n. But some tries will show us that it doesn't work. Here, my main tool checking such things are the master moves. So we see it doesn't work, so I will not even work. We have to work with different condition. And different condition modulo 2 is equivalent to this, but otherwise it's not so obvious if you don't know what we are looking for. So different condition is the twice bridge is equal sum of tunnels. So equivalent A plus C mod mod and now N N. We choose N, number of colors, and this is condition. So let's write that we work with Z N or Fox N colorings. And we have this condition. So, we know how we color. When we, this is A and B, then C, for example, here, of course, C must be equal to B minus A. It's worth of checking that really we don't need orientation of this diagram. C is equal to B minus A. But what is A? Of course, the same, to B minus C. Of course, everything modulo N. Which means that our condition is Symmetric, we don't need orientation, we don't have to go whether we go from A to this side or from C to this side. 
Later, when we try to generalize this, we relax this condition. There's no need to put condition that our method works on unoriented leaks. So now let's check that really what we'll be considering as last time, we are considering number of n colorings of the diagram. Number, number of n colorings of diagram B. So for a given diagram, this number of colors which satisfy our conditions. But we like to check that this is invariant under the Lademeister rules. So checking invariance of the Lademeister. So what we should remember from this, this rule, and then I will remind that the master moves. So we don't need anything except our rule. So let's check the Weber-Meister rules. First, the Weber-Meister rules. First, the Weber-Meister move. So essentially, we should show so what, how we understand such diagrams. Let's remind that we draw on the piece of the link or piece of the diagram which is different. The rest will be the same. Later, we'll argue that we can work in any three-dimensional manifold that you can work with partial links or relative links, meaning that it doesn't have to close, it may go to the, from boundary to boundary, but this is essentially the first of the master rule. So bijection. So if we have some color here A, of course this should be everything A. If here we have A, let, let's do from the bottom, A, then we go around, so here should be A as well. Now we all have our rule, so this should be twice a minus a. This is a. So clearly, first of the Meister move is not changing the number of n colorings. So let's write this formal number of coloring n after first of the Meister move is the same as number of n colorings before the Meister move. Okay. Similarly, easily we check second Rademeister move. So, we know that second Rademeister move is this. So, we try to see that number of fox and colorings of this part is the same as number of fox and colorings of this part. So, if here we have color A and B, of course this ends with color A and B. And outside it should be the same. So if you start here with color A and B, then B of course is always B. But what happened with A? Here we have twice B minus A, two B minus A. And what we have here, we have B, we have twice B, twice B, because B is always, and now minus two B minus A, which is So, second Rademeister move, we start at AB uniquely when here you have AB. So, coloring here is giving unique color here and vice versa. So, interesting is third Rademeister move, and let's have some space for the third Rademeister move. Third Rademeister move, so one, two, three. 
I will draw a picture kind of bread like because I will use this later even in oriented case. What is this? Step? Flu, tetra, and I still move. So now we move this on the top, on the side. So this will be first. So what I'm trying to show that number of colorings here is the same as here. I will show there's bijection between fox and colorings of this and fox and coloring of this. So let's start from the same coloring A B C. A B C now is the N and assume that we use our rule. Then what we like to see is that this uniquely is coloring this ax, as well this is uniquely coloring this ax, and we hope to end with the same colors. This, with some thinking, will finish proof that third Rademeister move is preserving the number of colorings. So what we are proving is the number of colorings of R3 of B and colorings is the same as number of N colorings of B. We work in Zn. Okay, so let's do this exercise. C is going to B. So C is going here. Now A is going under B. So it will be 2B minus A. And now this arc, this arc is going under C. So here the result is C minus two twice C. This twice, twice C minus 2b minus a, which is of course 2c minus 2b plus a. What about here? Here b is going over and b is going under c, so it is only twice c minus b. So we hope that the same result will be here. So now we'll compare the second side of the Rademeister move with the first side of the third Rademeister move. So, just to recall, we are trying to see that the third Rademeister move is preserving the number of n, of n of Fox n colorings of the diagram. So, assume that left side is already colored, we we'll see uniquely how to associate colors on the other side. Outside of this picture, it should be the same. So, here should be ABC, and hopefully we'll end with the same numbers here. So, let's fill everything in between. So let us remind the rule. So twice the bridge is equal sum of the tunnels. So for example, here B is going under C, so the result is 2C minus B. Twice the bridge minus the tunnel is another tunnel. Now A is going under the C, so it is similarly 2C minus A. Now we go down, C is going through, so C is here, very good, the same C. Now, this is already is result, B is going under C and ends with 2C minus B, 2C minus B. So the important thing is to see what happened with A. So initially A is going to 2C minus, 2C minus A, and then it is going under 2C minus B. So we have to take twice this, twice 2c minus b minus and 2c minus a would be lost. 2c minus a. So we can calculate this. So we have 4c minus 2c. So this is equal to 2c. Now we have minus 2b. This is the only place when b is. So minus 2b. And then minus minus a, so plus a. Thus, we got exactly the same result as on this side. So we have proven that the third Rademeister move is preserving the, the number of n Fox colorings. Let's write this more formally. Number of colorings using n colors of diagram after third Rademeister move is the same as before. 
And because we checked before first and second Rademeister move, we know that number of n colorings is invariant under all Rademeister moves. In other words, it is ring invariant. Therefore, we did prove the result. Let's write this formula theorem. That the number of Fox and colorings is preserved under the Rademeister move, meaning is ring invariant. We'll let's write it symbolically. Number of colorings and colorings. It's a ring Let's use this invariant in this part. Let's use this invariant to show that figure 8 not is non trivial. So let's. I will just make calculation. Already I'm guessing modulo 5, so calculation will be relatively easy. Example. Is the number of five colorings of Fox of figure 8. Not let me draw a small picture. Okay, we'll calculate the number of colorings. So, first of all, always we have trivial colorings. Of course, here we have five colors, so there's five trivial colorings. And then let's check whether there are non trivial colorings. Just to remember, maybe I should stress this before, that of course for a trivial knot, there's no choice. Five colorings of the trivial knot, on the trivial colorings are, so this is five. So if you can find any non-trivial coloring of figure 8 knot, well done. I will find all of them. So now I will describe this example of figure 8 knot and just make calculation. I draw bigger pictures than before, so we can make calculations without making mistakes because we can control everything and see everything. So we try to find Fox colorings. I already told you that it will happen to be Fox five colorings of figure eight knot, and you expect non trivial colorings. So let's do this. So we can start with arbitrary color A and B. No restrictions. We work with Z5, but even this later I will see how to relax this condition. So let's make calculations. A is going under B, so it is twice B minus A. B is going through, so on this level it will be B. Then 2B minus A is going farther, so I can write here 2B minus A. Somehow the blackboard is going down. Okay. So now, here we have twice to be minus a, so it is 4b minus 2a minus b, so it is 3b minus 2a. 3b minus 2a. Now, one should be careful. In fact, I draw here this red line, maybe it should be not visible, red line, because I can use the next crossing on the left side to compute this and this, and I can use this crossing to compute on this side, and then it should be the same. So let's just repeat that this B is going down, so here you have B. This A is going down very far, so even here is A, and here eventually there is A. And now we have to use this crossing and this crossing. So let's do first this crossing. So A is going to 2A, then it is minus 2B plus A. So 2A, so it is 3A, 3A, 3A once more, 2A minus 2B. 3A minus 2B. Now let's see what happened on this side. On this side, we have 3b minus 2a twice, to, to twice the bridge, so it is 6b minus 4a minus b. 
So it is 5b minus 4a. 5b minus, of course I did some mistake, but let collect this. When we, I should check once more. So this, is, this was wrong what I was saying, because on the top it's just going 3b minus 2a. On the bottom, we have some different value. So what would be the bottom? Bottom, we get twice this minus this. So it is 6b minus 4a, but then minus b. So 5b minus 4a. 5b minus 4a. And what are, so we have finished con calculation and they should agree. What this agreement is mean? It means that a, a should be congruent to 5b minus 4a, 5b minus 4a, modulo 5, modulo n, which is proper. We see that 5 is really kind of necessary to have non-trivial colorings. And then on the bottom, they need 3a minus 2b, 3a minus 2b must be equivalent to 3b minus 2a. 3b minus 2a. Let's see what it means. You can say that if you move a on this side, it will be 5a. If you move this 5b on this side, we get 5a minus b must be congruent, must be zero in z something. And when we look here again, it is 2a and 2a, 5a minus 5b. So we got one, the only one equation. And when this equation holds, this equation holds when 5 is the same as zero. So we have to work with z5. z5, 5 colors. And when we work in Z5, and I said already we work with five colorings to have something non-trivial, there was no restriction, any color here and any color here. So we can conclude that number of colorings, five colorings of our diagram. Remember, figure eight not sometimes is called four one. So for short, I write like this, is equal to five ten times. Five choices, five choices is 25. Now, for trivial knot, obviously, and once I know it already, there's no choice. It has to be trivial color, one color here, there are five possibilities. So five, of course, is different than, different than 25. So you can conclude, knowing that number of Fox color is invariant on the Vatemeister move, this I will check in a moment. We can conclude that figure 8 knot is different than trivial knot. So having such nice example, we know that our invariant is pretty nice. Remember, three coloring was showing that that trefoil knot is different than trivial knot because it has non-trivial three coloring. And now we show that the same is true with figure 8 knot using five colors. So now let's check that the other nice moves are preserving number of, generally, number of fox coloring. So I already was showing this, so we know this. So let's try to generalize. So there are various methods of generalizing this. I will still for a moment use, use our figure 8 mode. I will use our figure 8 mode. So, what is another possibility? Instead of looking modulo which number everywhere our equivalences agree, like here, we can just ask abstract questions. So now we slightly go into algebra, but it's still rather easy abstract question. So we are looking for the group constructed in the following way. In this case, it will be group, of course, related with figure 8 not which has two generators, because we started A and B, and it was uniquely giving everything. So group given by two generators A and B. And what are relations? Of course, these are relations. 
So the relations are, there's only one relation, 5a minus b must be equal to 0. We don't have to write equal to 0, but this relation. Now, everybody more or less knowing basic of group theory, we'll see that one generator, let's say a minus b, is disappearing after multiplying by 5, but there's another generator which, let's say a or b, and the second which doesn't disappear. So this group is equal z plus z5. So we can call this group kind of universal or fundamental Fox colorings of the diagram. This kind of universal element. And then we see that this group will not disappear if we work modulo 5. There is this additional z, which in sophisticated way we can say is corresponding to trivial colorings. So maybe let's make this definition more formal. So we have Fox coloring for given coloring, but as well we can have universal group. So let's erase this. So how this universal group is created? So this is group, I call this pi related with diagram, no orientation needed. So, as I said, I will define this by generator and relators, kind of universal object. So first of all, what are generators? Generators, as on this picture, they all arcs from tunnel to tunnel, something which has always the same color are our generators. I will just write informally arcs. And what are, what are relations? For every crossing, so I will write it schematically, for every crossing, A, B, this should be B, so there's nothing, but this should be 2B minus A. So these are names of arcs, arc A, arc B, and arc C. But arc C has to satisfy relation C equal to B minus A. So very schematically, you can say generators and relators. Number of generators, number of arcs, number of relators is number of crossings. Our example was showing that one, that one relator is following from another, but, but this is the total. So just to finish this story, we can, we can check that, or essentially we check, because we show, we show kind of bijection, but it should be isomorphism of group, but anyway, we can show that this group is invariant of a link. Not only depend on the diagram, but this group is invariant of the link. Like for figure 8 knot, it was z plus z5. For telephone, if you compute, it will be z plus z3. So now let's go to something sophisticated, maybe which we are show in the future, that this group has nice interpretation. Essentially it was known, and this is another story, even to Alexander. For sure it was known for Fox for three colorings, and in different language it was good, good known to other people. So it happened that now I will use the phrases which will be explained later. So our link is embedded in S3. Now we can take the double branch cover, let's call this M, with two branches along the link. So this concept was already considered very early by Higgard in his PhD thesis of 1898. And Alexander was showing that every manifold can be obtained by some branch cover. Not necessarily two. Two is not sufficient. But always we can take two-fold cover of S3 
three branched along L, meaning that over L it is not regular standard covering, but some, something branched. But anyway, this may be next talk. What we can have? Now we can compute homology of this manifold. H, first homology of this manifold. With Z, to co with Z coefficients. Maybe let me write Z just to be sure. And this happened to be exactly, maybe not exactly because kind of trivial, trivial coloring is mixing this, but if you add Z for trivial colorings, that's exactly our group which we constructed. So I don't know which name to put here. I would put historically maybe Alexander. However, it is not exactly this setting. Alexander, maybe Lady Meister. Maybe then some version of this term was known. So I describe it how to construct group of colorings or maybe just invariant of links counting number of Fox colorings. But we can try to do it much more generally. And this in fact was given by first time published and first time given by two mathematicians, David. David Joyce in his PhD thesis and Sergei Matveyev was working in Chelabinsk in Russia. So this was the year PhD thesis of Joyce, 1979 and the work of Matfeyev more or less the same time. Papers were published, both papers in 82. So, how, what was the reason? The reason was the following, generalizing Fox coloring. Consider crossing. I will consider here oriented links just to have better, more generality. I will comment a little what happens if there is no orientation. So I will orient it from top to bottom. So this reasoning was as well. As well, we'll be coloring arcs. And when you go over, we don't change color. But we take arbitrary set X, set of colors. So we can have color A and color B. One assumption was that when you go over, we don't change color. So here will be B. What about this? We are thinking before it was just some rule, some rule for Fox coloring. But now we say that the rule is just arbitrary, but there is a rule. So you have A and B, we kind of think that B acts on A, and this is the result. So what we need? We need additional binary relation, star, and then all this, going from X times X into X. So set which is by an operation like this is usually called, called magma. So no restrictions for the moment. Magma. So having a magma, we can have a rule of colorings. Here we should have A star B. And last in the case of Fox coloring. We have all colorings using colors at, so it's finite set. But we try to make counting now. So we, we consider all colorings using this rule, this binary operation, and we check whether the number we get, number of colorings, is invariant under the Meister moves. So, all. X and I will still write the binary operation with one notation of the diagram. Number of colorings satisfying this rule. This rule. Number of colorings 
with the sleeves. I draw here positive crossing. What to do with negative crossing? This is by convention is positive now. All the time people claim that it should be called negative. But now, now for a good 20 years, it is positive crossing. Probably for 30 years. So what we do for negative crossing? We should use similar rule, but for the moment we don't know anything. So when I have negative crossing, If you have negative crossing, I would say it similar that this is B, this is A, this is B. So this I will call A, some new operation. A star B. A is under B. So kind of we extend our magma to two magmas for the moment in the time. And count colorings, which on positive crossing satisfy this relation, and on negative crossing satisfy this relation. So this will be coloring, maybe for a moment, I should just add for a moment that we have two different relations. And now we check whether such coloring is preserved by Rademeister moves. In fact, I would like to spend more attention to third Rademeister move only just shortly mention the first and second, even if second specially is important. So what about first Rademeister move? I will just do it here. So first Rademeister move is something like this. It's one of them and then we have the second one. So if so I would like to have bijection after move. So if this is color A, so this is color A. I will go from bottom to top. If this is color A, then this is colored A. We need some orientation. In fact, it will not depend on orientation, but let's put some orientation. Do I put orientation down? But anyway, this crossing is positive. But it's not important it's positive, but it looks like this one. Which means that what we get. We get that whatever is here x, then this is a, this is x star a is equal to a. But we want this x to be a. One have to think a little, but I would like to say that this will lead, lead to axiom. A star A is A, and if you make here negative crossing, we have A star A is equal to A. It requires some work here because you can say we can have more general thing, but when we add the second Rademeister move, then there will be no choice. Anyway, I wanted to not to spend too much on the first Rademeister move. It should it Cause no problem if A star A is A and A star bar A is A. Similarly for the second Rademeister move, so I will only draw one case, kind of, and going orientation down. So this should be the same. When you have such picture, the first crossing is positive, the second crossing is negative. So if I start from A to B, B of course is going through, but here A is going to A star B, and then here we use star bar, so we get that A star B, and now star bar B. And this should be the same as, of course, A B, A B. So that should be that B is equal A, that not B, uh, this should be here. This B was for this, and this, of course, is here. This, this on the other side is B. So, of course, we wonder about this leg. It should be A, and here we got A star B star bar B. So, let's write somewhere with small letters this algebraic identity corresponding to the first Rademeister move and second. 
you can easily see that if you switch here all of them, and maybe if you go in the opposite direction, the role of star and star bar will be changed. So, with very small letters, we can write here our moves. The rule corresponding to the first of the Meister move was that A star A is A. In fact, the second one will follow. So we don't need this. And then the second rule is A star B star B is equal to A. And similarly, A star B star B is equal to A as well. We can say here informally, it can be changed to a very formal way, that star bar and star are inverse operation one to another. You can, can formalize this. So this is corresponding to first order master move, this is corresponding to second order master move. For us it is interesting what will correspond to the third order master move. And we'll be one step closer to Jan Baxter operator. But for the moment, no. For the moment, and I will say, before erasing everything, that the object we get, such algebraic magma with two operations, satisfying this and this, and then the third, which we will get in a moment, they call this quantum. Joyce called this quantum, and then everybody after him. So let us erase this and check third order my step. Yeah. left side of the third master move, right side, and then see which condition has been to be satisfied. So the number of colorings from left side is the same as on the right side. We will show bijection between these colorings. So let me draw once more. And then, let's say this on the top will go to the other side. So this is third of the master move. Then we assume the diagrams are the same outside of this picture. There is some coloring ABC and ABC, and then when you go to the diagram using our rule of magma, then you should get the same result here and here. And this will allow us to conclude there is bijection between coloring on this side and coloring on this side. So let me do this. A, B, C. So C is going to B is stop by C, so it is B star C. Finally, what happened with A? A is going under B, so here it is A star B. And then A star B is going under C. So here you get A star B star C. And then you have to do this on the same, on this side. So of course C is going through, so left leg again, then B, B may be complicated, no B is not complicated because B is just going under C in an order, so it is B star C again. So now if you didn't see this yet, any calculation like this, what you would expect? Maybe here we can get something which is giving associativity. But no, it will be not associativity, it will be different condition, but still pretty well recognizable. So what it will be here, we go with A, so first A is going under C, it is A star C, and then A star C, 
and then B going under C also a little bit and here, but let me write here. And now A star C is going under B star C. So this A star C, star B star C. So what we got? We got A star B star C is equal to A star C star B star C. This will be third necessary condition for our algebraic system to produce invariant of links, this quantum structure. So what is the third axiom? Let me write this one small. It is A star B star C should be equal a star C star B star C. And now we can recognize, we did see such axiom in many places in mathematics. It is distributivity, except it is distributivity of star with respect to star. So self-distributivity. So this axiom we call self-distributivity on the right side. So right. Self, self distributed. Right self distributed. So, this axiom, this is idempotence condition. And condition, this is invertibility. And final right self distributivity. So, if you like to deal with all the Meister moves, we have to have these three axioms. So, let notation. notation. I need space. Space. So, definition of quantum. So, we don't have to introduce immediately two operations. We can say that we introduce star, and then the, for the star, there's another operation which is inverse to star in this sense. Or even we can formulate like differently that multiplying by b. Give, is giving invertible map and inverse is star bar. So let's write quantum condition is x star magma satisfying conditions one. Then it is interesting, because this is only 1979, but then some people remember that really Conway with his friend Wright in, in England were considering similar structure, except that they didn't have axiom 1, kind of, you can say now that they were ignoring first the Meister move. And they were calling this, they were calling this, so this is first part of definition, second part of definition, if on the two and three holds. So this is the famous John H. Conway, who died recently. Conway and Wright, about 1959, so very early. And the object which, which satisfied two and three they initially called Rack, but somehow then this name was changed to Rack. They use this for biblical Rack and the ruins because they noticed that it is satisfied by group when operation is conjugation. So not full structure of group, but something what is left. Then, then 
much later people were considering let's say only the third axiom or maybe maybe only the first and the third axiom and Alisa Kram then PhD student in 2004 put the name which usually now are used so if only we have right self-distributivity if axiom 3 then then she was calling the object shelf similarly if axiom 1 and 3 holds if 1 and 3 then she called the object spindle so spindle some people use for shelf algebraists prefer to just call this light self distributive uh, magma or system even but sometimes it is convenient in, in not at all to call this shelf if only right self distributivity spindle if axiom one and three rack if axiom two and three and quand if all three axioms especially later define homology we need only right self distributivity i didn't thought that this is sometimes useful for computation of course sometimes we need all axioms but for definition only axiom three right self distributivity so maybe just a few comments historical comments so distributivity was considering for a long time but the first person and maybe i should give one example they gave so they find the, the following object which really satisfies right side distributivity really you can do magma from this a little similar to alexander polynomial but so very often people call this alexander quandl but they were friends and the name of the people are Burstein and Burstein and Mayer. and let me check whether my how is spelled Mayer. Okay, Boosty and Mayer. So they wrote paper in 1929 when really they discuss self-distributivity and describe some properties, but in particular they describe the following example. So example let G be a group. and the automorphism of G into G. Here we assume invertible because we like to have quantum later. And how they define operation, how we define magma on G, different operations and group operation, A star B is equal to E A plus one minus T. So, in a sense, this, this kind of operation were well, known, but not really considered, and in particular, they notice that this satisfies right side distributivity, and in fact, all axioms. So, of course, if A is equal to B, if A is equal to B, then obviously, we get, we get, if A is equal to B, of course, we get A or B, because they are equal. So, we'll generalize this. This is called now Alexander Quandl, because Alexander was this one year earlier similar definition for Alexander polynomial, and later it was recognized as this Alexander, Alexander So maybe let me finish this part by, this, by telling a few words about Boosting and Mayer. I think it's a fascinating story. So, Celestin Boosting, this I didn't know for a long time, Celestin Boosting, Celestin 
Bolesti? Bolesti. 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 Okay. So they were mathematical physicists and they wrote several papers in differential geometry. They were cooperating with, with Einstein. So when later they have trouble with Job, and it was still before Hitler took power, but they, were, they, they had problems with an Austrian, then Austria was, was occupied by, by Germany. So anyway, just, I, just to make story short, Mayer is very well known because I think you spell Mayer. Yeah? Very well known because of Mayer Vietoli's sequence in algebraic topology. So the story of Mayer is well known. He was brought by Einstein to Princeton and he was his assistant in Princeton. And in such a way he survived the war. And, and, and then in fact, Einstein said that he will not go to Princeton to for advanced study if they will not let and give job to his assistant, Mayer. So when you take some book about Einstein, you can find a lot of about Mayer. On the other hand, about Bullstein, initially I couldn't find anything. He realized that he was born in Tarnopol, which was then a kind of Polish town. He did his exam matura there. He, then he emigrated to Vienna. Then he was friend of Mayer. He did PhD in Vienna. He was working with Einstein, and Einstein was thinking about position for him as well. But he has a problem because Bullstein was a communist. So probably Einstein had idea, we have no proof of this, Einstein has idea that then he should have a job in Soviet Union. So the job was arranged for him in Minsk, and in fact initially in Minsk he, he had good position. He became member of Belarusian Academy of Science and professor at Minsk University. But then it was Soviet Union, so in 19, he was communist in 1937, he was arrested, and 1938 he died, and in fact we know that he died when interrogated. So this was a rather sad story, so position in, in, in the Soviet Union was not that good as position in Princeton in the US. Then I will talk more, more, more about the generalization of quantum first to First to biquantum, so prefer to have slightly less general structure, set theoretic Young Baxter equation, and then finally Young Baxter equation. And of course, whole topics of homology is still before us. So I was just discussing the beginning of studying of distributivity in algebraic manner, and it was by Walter Mayer and, and by Celestin Burstein and Walter Mayer. Here are the proper dates, and I said that Einstein was trying to find a job for them, and he found, but it was good for Bernstein, didn't end that well for Mayer. But I would like to say, so first of all, the paper has distributivity even in the title. Distributive group and form, etc., etc. More interesting for, for non-German speaking people is that it was in 2014, it was translated into English, and this paper is available just on Archive. So I will leave Bursty and Mayer. In fact, Mayer mathematically did very interesting things already in Princeton. Didn't work that much with Einstein, but has very good idea of generalizing homo homology when it was generalized chain complex. It was zero not after two steps, but after many steps. And there's long history why it was for a while forgotten and only last 20 years it was rescued by Kapranov and Hovanov and his students. So let's erase this and see how what you can do above quantums. Very naively, we can generalize invariants coming from X and star coming from magma in the following way. 
Again, still we have positive and negative crossing. But this time, when you have here color A and B, there are no any need really that B is resolving color. B equally well can change color. So in such a way, my, my coloring is really from crossing to crossing. We call this semi-alx. So coloring, we have finite set X, and coloring is the function from, we call this semi-alx, into x, which means that we can change color at crossing, but from crossing to crossing there is one color. So we have such, we have such uh, colorings, and we, we can have some notation here that write me here are one of a, d, one color, and r2 of a, b. And here you can have different rule instead of r, I will call this r bar. 1 of a, b, r, 2 of a, b. So again, we consider all such colorings and we count how many we have with these rules. So, so what is really r? We have map, we can call this A, B in the first. And say by R is going to coordinate R1, A, B, R2, A, B. And then we have second map. Let's call this R bar. And it's going to R1, A, B, R2. So it's a very similar situation, like with quandles or like in fox coloring, except that we allow more, because we allow here changing our color, going over the crossing. So now what will be invariant? We just count all possible colorings using these rules. So this will be coloring using this rule, so maybe you can have, you have R and R bar of the diagram D, oriented diagram D. And again, as before, we have to check first, second, and third Rademeister move. For the moment, I will omit the first Rademeister move. One can deal somehow often with this. Only let's look at second and third Rademeister move. So, first Rademeister move first. So let's erase this. And just extend this to the second Rademeister move. So this will go here. And of course, after the second Rademeister move is the same as this. A and B. A and B. So what we are getting? We are getting that R1, AB, R2, AB, under, so here kind of go by R, and here go by R bar. They have to be undone. In a sense, we can say that our R and R bar are inverse one to another. So, R for sending X times X into X times X, and R bar as well, for sending x times x into x times x. And the fact that it works in second Rademeister move means that they are inverse one to another. So R, R, R equal R equal identity. Identity, of course, R to A. This is equal R bar R. So only the third Rademeister move is interesting. So let's do now the third Rademeister move and see what properties are satisfied by R and R bar by these two groups. So 
And in the sense, we see that more complicated structure, more general structure, not complicated, more general structure, the easiest condition, which means it is good generalization. So let's see Territory Meister move. So I'm doing this often, once more. Again, we start from some color A, B, C, A, B, C, and to have bijection, because we try to see the number of colors, if R and R bar of diagram is unchanged. Having here color again is uniquely going, because we, if you can know these two colors, we know these two colors, given by R1, R2, we know, etc. So we should end in the same point. But it's much better instead of working in coordinates, as often happens, instead of working coordinates and have complicated formula, we just work with such a map. And then it's easy to see what is going on. When we go to the first crossing, here you have to write, use our operation R, and you do nothing here. The next crossing, we do R here, and nothing here. Finally, we use R here, and nothing here. Here. here it is similar but in different order, which is in order. So we start from R and identity, then R here and identity here, finally R here and identity here. And the result of compositions of this part should be the same. So what will be the equation? Let me erase this. Like this, but remember that R is going from x times x into x times x. Means that here it is x times x and x, so this will be identity of the map from x to the third power to x to the third power. So what we have on this side? On this side we have R represent product with identity, composed with identity represent product with R, and finally R. And this must be equal. And we write this in the other side. So it is equal identity R R identity identity R. And you see that's a very easy equation. In fact, more general than this equation is well known in physics. It's called Young Baxter equation. Because here we deal only with sets, because our R was sending x times x into x times x. Then Dreenfeld called this, so it is Dreenfeld terminology, Dreenfeld called this set theoretic Young Baxter operator, or Young Baxter equation. Set, set theoretic. Young, Young, Baxter, Baxter. What about R? If R satisfies only this equation but is not yet invertible, usually we call this pre Young Baxter operator or set theoretic pre Young Baxter operator. If R is invertible, this is just Young Baxter operator. Set theoretic because we involve only sets. So R, if R invertible, R is called set theoretic. Set theoretic. Young Baxter. So this is terminology of Greenfeld. Phi 
Beat Metal is also remembered. However, just the name Jan Baxter Operator, the small general object which I will describe later, is has name, of course, it's coming from Young and Baxter, and they use it in, in inverse scattering or in other topics, but it was invented by Fadiev. Not much before, not much before. So Fadiev coined the name Young Baxter operator, and if it's acting on the set, Winfeld calls this set theoretic Young Baxter operator. So about this I will talk later, just to mention that Homology theory for quantums was developed in 1990s. Set, set, homology theory for, for set theoretic Young Baxter operator was developed, if I remember well, in 2004. In all of this development, there are two groups of people very much involved in England, Fenn, Rurik, and Sanderson, and mostly in America. Carlton and Saito, and in Japan, Kabata. And then, for general Jan Baxter operator, homology was more recently developed by Victoria Lebet and by myself. So I will talk about this later, and I will show some calculations. So thank you.